70 hectares of forest near the abandoned Chernobyl nuclear plant are still on fire this afternoon while a larger area of woodland is still smouldering too, we can report. But the ongoing blaze isn't the biggest concern. Rather, it's the contaminated smoke particles being sent up into the atmosphere because of the blazes. Ukrainian officials report that there are still large areas of smouldering grass and trees. Scientists say that plants in the 30-kilometre exclusion zone around the abandoned reactor there are still highly contaminated and that the fire could have released particles up into the air. Well, now, of course, the worry is where the potentially contaminated smoke is set to drift. We're trying to track it. We talked to local residents about their fears. Well, reminding ourselves here of the geography, uh, Chernobyl's just 100 kilometers, for instance, for a start from the capital, Kiev. The area is still heavily contaminated by radiation after what was the world's worst nuclear power accident back in 1986. And you can see the map here and how it pans out. And you can see as well how uh, far or close it is relatively to major cities, major populations. Noam Segal from the Israel Energy Forum spoke to us and says anyone who inhales smoke from the fire is in danger. The smoke has spread radiation particles. There are winds carrying the smoke north towards Kiev. Um, and there is a certain danger to people living in, in the area. I think that anyone there is not safe from the radiation if he's not uh, wearing a protective gear. Um, the radiation is still there. It's been almost 30 years since uh, the disaster in Chernobyl. Uh, but there is still radiation and there are particles in the air and in the, in the woods. Um, that the fire just uh, places them in the air and anyone who's breathing the air there is, is in, in certainly in danger. Well, as far as we can make out, the flames got within a few kilometres of Chernobyl itself, but getting reliable updates on what was a deeply serious situation proved difficult. It seems the main source for what was going on inside the contaminated zone was the Facebook page of Ukraine's internal affairs minister. Arsen Avakov posted hourly updates about the blaze, so anyone who needed to know more had to get updates there. Well, despite the warnings over the dangers of radioactive smoke from the fire, emergency crews at the scene too have been seen combating the blaze without what looks like sufficient protective gear. Environmentalist Rudy Mankey says that wasn't the best decision. Um, there are certain areas in the exclusion zone that are more contaminated than others, and they're they're farther in the exclusion zone. Well, I think that I think that poses another danger. Radionuclides in the atmosphere, once you breathe them in, you've got them, and it's a cumulative effect. So the more you take in, the more trouble you're going to have. At RT.com, we've got more on the situation around the Chernobyl nuclear plant, than including the reaction of more officials and more video of the fires. And we'll try and track uh, the uh, smoke and where it's heading. A forest fire has erupted in an inclusion zone around the Chernobyl nuclear plant in Ukraine. The fire has prompted fears that radioactive substances in the woodland may spread. The fire began on Tuesday. Ukraine's Interior Ministry officials say the flames have spread across 400 hectares and have reached an area 20 kilometers from the plant. They also say the fire may have been started intentionally. The blaze is believed to have several origins. Ukrainian Prime Minister Arseniy Yatsenyuk said 200 personnel are fighting the blaze. He said the fire is the biggest since 1992, but the situation is under control. Yatsenyuk added no change in background radiation levels has been detected. One of the reactors at the Chernobyl plant exploded in 1986, sending a huge amount of radioactive materials into the air. After the disaster, an area within a 30-kilometer radius of the plant was declared a no-go zone. The people in charge of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant have launched a new phase of an ambitious project. They're trying to control a buildup of contaminated water at the plant with an underground wall of ice. 
Tokyo Electric Power Company began the project 10 months ago. Officials plan to freeze soil around four reactor buildings and create an ice wall one and a half kilometers long. They hope that will keep groundwater from seeping in and becoming contaminated. Workers have driven pipes into the ground. Japan's nuclear regulators this week approved TEPCO's plan to start trials at 18 on-site locations. The utility on Thursday began sending liquid of minus 30 degrees Celsius into the pipes. If all goes as planned, TEPCO will seek approval to start freezing at other locations to eventually create the wall. The Japanese government decided on a 40-year safety limit for nuclear reactors following the accident in 2011. But Kansai Electric Power Company wants to continue running two of its oldest reactors for an additional 20 years. After careful inspections were completed, officials decided to seek approval. The utility is the first to file an application with the Nuclear Regulation Authority for an operating extension. It covers the number one and number two reactors at the Takahama plant in Fukui Prefecture, central Japan. Power companies that want to extend the operating limit must carefully examine reactors and other equipment for possible deterioration. Kansai Electric officials say their inspections did not find any safety problems. For the extension to be granted, the reactors must pass a screening process based on the new requirements. The application must be approved by July 2016 before the Takahama reactors can go back online. Kansai Electric also plans to carry out a special inspection of the number three reactor at its Mihama plant, which started operating 38 years ago.
The Japanese government is seeking to pass a law that will set a 40-year limit for nuclear reactors. If enacted, it will be the first legislation regulating the lifespan of nuclear reactors. Whew, wow, I didn't expect that at all. I really didn't expect that. The call for a review of the safety regulations on Friday was made by Nuclear Crisis Minister Go Shosono. It follows Japan's worst ever nuclear power plant accident in March. The government wants to make radical changes to its safety regulations. Nuclear power will only be used when it's confirmed to be safe. Okay, you know what, you know, I got a weak stomach, that's all I can really take. All right, I'll see you all. Jay? Under the plan, the working life of nuclear reactors would be limited to 40 years in principle. Extensions would be subject to government checks on the obsolescence of the facility, and the plant's operators could have capacity to provide appropriate maintenance. Where did Jay go? He went to throw up. <laughs> of the 54 nuclear reactors in Japan, three have been in operation for more than 40 years, including the number one reactor at the Fukushima Daiichi. Over the next five years, nine more will reach the 40-year mark. That's fucked up. Oh, that's fucked up. We'll never let it happen again. It's highly significant that a 40-year limit has been decided on and stipulated in legislation. Okay. All right. No, seriously. I think I'm done. Woo, I think we're done. I think that's good. The government plans to submit a bill by the end of this month. Ooh. You know what, guys? This is not a good look for me! Officials from more than 150 countries and one territory have supported a joint statement calling for an end to the use of nuclear weapons in consideration of their inhumane consequences. The 2015 Review Conference of the Parties to the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty is underway at UN headquarters in New York. Delegates have been presenting statements at the four-week-long conference. On Tuesday, 158 nations and the territory backed the joint statement, but the supporting parties did not include nations possessing nuclear arms. All states share the responsibility to prevent the use of nuclear weapons, to prevent the vertical and horizontal proliferation, and to achieve nuclear disarmament. The international community is increasingly recognizing the inhumane consequences of nuclear arms. Three international conferences have been held to deal with the subject. However, opinion is split even among the parties supporting the joint communique. Officials from Austria and other countries want a treaty banning nuclear weapons. Those from Japan and other nations insist on a realistic disarmament approach involving nuclear-armed countries.